Good evening, folks. It is uh, Comics Camp at MerrickBennett.com. Well, there it is right there on the screen, MerrickBennett.com. Um, and I am doing a little scanning session, as promised, because we've got a lot of artwork happening this month. And we're going to give it a go, scanning in some artwork. So let's see. I'll close this down. And we'll see what we have here. So I have taken the uh, 11 by 17 poster that we made earlier today. And it is 11 by 17, so I'm setting the scanner to that size. I'm setting it, well, that's the only orientation we can do. I have my Epson scanner under my desk here. Um, we're not gonna rotate, we're gonna scan it as a grayscale because this is just a black and white inked image. And I usually do them at 600 dots per inch. If you want a really high resolution scan, you can do 1200, 600 is fine for me. Those are the settings I tend to use here. Um, and it's set to save it as a TIFF file. So I'll hit scan and it'll say the scanner is not turned on, but it is. So I'll close the scanning equipment, open it up with the same settings, hit scan. Ah, there it was, it just needed to be woken up again. It always pays to try again. And the scanning takes a couple seconds, right? So we'll, uh, we'll check the comments and so on. Um, hope you're having a nice evening. Hope you're getting some artwork done, getting out in what I hope is nice weather wherever you are. All right, our scan is done. That's as quick as it goes. Um, so I'm gonna shut down this scanning software here and we can open up the scan. First thing you notice is that poster comes out um, sideways. So we'll rotate it around and that's how we want it to look. And everything looks good. The whole picture is there. So I'll close it in the photo viewer. And just check and make sure you can see everything here. All right. Now I'm going to open it in, uh, you might have Photoshop. I use GIMP, which is the freeware equivalent. And there it is. So we have now brought this 11 by 17 page that we drew earlier today into a digital file, which means that scanner has converted it into a whole bunch of pixels. Look at all those pixels. You notice, first of all, you notice there's no pure white or pure black. They're all shades of gray, um, one degree or another. So the first thing I'm gonna do, ultimately I wanna make this a pure black and white image where each pixel is either white or or black um, and there's no in between. That's what's going to print the most crisp on the page. So the first thing I like to do is I'll blur that image. Let's zoom in so we get a good shot of what this looks like. So you're looking at these pixels that are all gray and you get some of the grain of the paper. You get maybe some dust and scratches um, or little dots of dirt and stuff that are on the paper. So I'm gonna blur that just so we eliminate a few of those little dust and scratches bits. And there it goes, that's subtle. We could even do it one more time. This may be anathema to those of you who use a lot of fine lines, but I actually want my lines to look a little smoother. So that has actually gone from this, which is really crisp and bitty and grainy to this, which will be a little smoother when we go up and do now, if you're in Photoshop, you might do brightness contrast and boost the contrast all the way to make it black and white, right? Um, and then you can play with the brightness, making the image darker or lighter as you want and finding something that looks about right for the whole image. And we can see how that changes. Too dark and we're gonna get a whole lot of black and gray on there too light and we're going to miss a lot of those pixels, right? But right in the middle, we're going to get all black and white and it's going to be nice and crisp as a black and white inked drawing. I'm actually going to cancel out of there because with GIMP, I like to use the threshold tool, which boosts the contrast all the way. And then you can choose where the midpoint is, where the changeover is between black and white. If I set it too close to light, pixels, you're going to get a very dark image. If I set it too close to the black, you're going to get there, a very, very faint image, which is no good for anybody. All right, so let's move it up a little darker than it would be normally, and we'll hit OK. Now, if I zoom in on those pixels again, you see 
There are no gray pixels. It's all black or all white. Now's the point where we may want to look over this image and make sure any dust and scratches artifacts like that right there. I'll take my pen and I'll take some white ink and I'll just get rid of that. Let's just check and make sure there aren't any artifacts at the edge of a page. Out here on the edge isn't super important. That's probably going to get clipped as it goes into the image, but I'll just give a quick scan here. Come down this side. I'm also looking very quickly for little bits that might be artifacts of pencil lines I forgot to erase. You know, this really doesn't matter that much on this particular picture, because as you can see, I want those bushes looking awfully, awfully scratchy. I just don't want any outlying little blips of ink in the picture. I just saw one there. There's one. I want it not to look like there's accidental blips in there. Let's see, those are very scratchy ink lines by design. That's fine. This image is a little different because it's so messy. It's the forest of the wilderness in uh, Northern Virginia. And actually we're gonna go into this and color it with crayons, I'm thinking. Um, and I'll still have the black and white inked version here as a digital file that I can come back to if I need to, if I need to print it as a black and white, like coloring book page or something. All right, I think that's pretty good. So the last step we're gonna do here, this is a pretty simple one because there isn't a lot to, um, to edit. Actually, let's take one look at our characters' faces and make sure they look about right. I see we can adjust Jonas's nose a little. There's a little dust there. We'll zoom in up. There's a little bit of dust by the sword in the smoke. We'll let our crayons do all those dusty, messy artifacts instead of the ink. All right. So the last step I'll do here is I'm going to go into um, image and go to mode and create an indexed mode image. So I don't want this image to, I don't want each pixel to be any value between white and black and they just happen to be black and white. I'm going to make it a one bit palette which means each pixel is either a zero or a one. That makes the size of this file much, much smaller, much better for saving. I'll convert it. Sometimes it takes a second, but that's all it took. And then I'll save it, or in the case of GIMP, I export as. I'm just gonna export it to the desktop for now. And we're calling this poster wilderness. This is from the Winslow Homer painting, Skirmish in the Wilderness. I'll call it 01 temp because I have one other preliminary file there. And if it's a temp file, I usually save it with LZW compression. You don't want to have any compression if you're going to be printing from this file. But as an archived temp file, I'm going to save it with LZW compression now. Now, when I'm ready to put it into the book, this, you can see here, the this image is 10,200 pixels wide by 6,600 pixels tall. So what I'm gonna do here, I'll, I'll actually make the pages to put into the book. Let's say we're gonna cut it exactly in half to go into an eight and a half by 11 book. Well, then I'll select up to 5,100 pixels. Oh, you know what, 5,100, let me zoom in a little bit. Should be able to get up to I'm looking down in the lower left where it shows the numbers of my location of my cursor. See how it's going down to 5,104. That's probably close enough for me. All right, and I will crop it to that and I will save that as Winslow Homer, uh, the Wilderness Homer 01A. That will be the left side of the two page spread with no compression, because this is the file I'll print from. Then I'll undo that. I'll select the inverse, which is the other side of the image. I'll crop to that. And then I'll save that as, you guessed it, B, no compression. All right, now I can close that out. And if we look back on our desktop, we now have this nice B file and this nice A file right here. Our A file is the left page. That's what I'll put into the book itself. And the right hand page will be the B file. Whoops, there. 
and that'll be on the right hand page. So I'll put that into the book itself if I'm printing them as black and white. But I'm also going to color these maybe tomorrow or Friday. I'll come in, color that original um, as a uh, crayon color picture. Then I'll have to scan it with RGB color. Anyways, we do have another file that I scanned for us here. I'm going to drag it into GIMP and open it up. Ah, yes, it's two pages um, of Walt Whitman Poetry Comics. So let's see. These are actual pages from the book. I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees clockwise. Does one of those look a little askew to you? I need to test these. So what I'm going to do just to make sure they're on there on the scanner bed straight is I will transform them by flipping them horizontally just temporarily. Whoa, now that looks totally different to my eye because um, I got used to seeing it the other way. But now I can look at them fresh and it does look to me like this one leans slightly. See how that up and down selection comes away towards the bottom and over here comes away towards the top. Yep, so that's rotated slightly. I'm gonna select it. I'm going to cut it out. Whoops, let me try that again with a white background. I'm going to cut it out. There we go. I'm going to paste it back in. And I'll come in with the rotate tool and just rotate it a smidge of a degree counterclockwise. And it'll calculate that. Maybe a little more than that counterclockwise. Let's try that. And it'll calculate that. What do you think? That's a little better. Flatten the image. I will reflip it horizontally so I can look at it again normally. Let's crop it down just a little bit. I'm going to save this as a temporary file. Let's take out that middle line there. I'll just select it and hit delete. So that cleans up that middle line. Um, I'm going to save this as a temporary file, but first I'll run that process on, on both of these pages again. So I blur the image. Then I come into colors and I'll choose threshold. And actually, let's take a quick look at this. There's Walt Whitman writing in his journal. And you can see every pixel is some shade of gray. Watch that little speck of dirt above his eyes there. There he is writing. So we'll come in here and we'll hit threshold. And then we'll find something that keeps those, we'll move this deciding point till the lines look thick enough. If I go too far, We'll get that speck of dirt above his eye and some other specks of dirt as well that should be blurred out. So we'll bring it back from that. There we go. Now every pixel is either white or black. It's going to print nice and crisply on the page. And there are maybe a couple cleanup pieces we can do here. But first, oh, there's one. You notice that artifact right there because I patched over that bottom panel. So we'll just select that. And we'll hit delete, and that line is gone. And let's check for other artifacts in here around the edges of the picture. This is a lovely poem, a, a sobering poem, actually, about um, visiting a field hospital just after a big battle in the middle of the night. And it wasn't actually, oh, there's a little speck. It wasn't actually something that Whitman um, did, I found out after we started working with this poem, it was something related to him by someone he was uh, in correspondence with. So it's secondhand knowledge, but he really writes it up beautifully in this poem, and it is exactly the sort of thing he did see. So, um, so I'm using it as Walt Whitman's account. All right, so let me save this one. I'm going to export it as, oh, I already did, Walt Whitman March in the Ranks A. That's going to be my temp file. And I'll save that into a temp folder. Let's see. We'll hit temp. We'll even compress it with LZW because this is not the final file we'll use to print. And then I'll just select one of these. We'll crop down to that. And I'll save this as the final um, file. So this we'll call Walt Whitman March in the Ranks 01. And we won't save it with compression. Oh, I forgot to do an important step. Let me go back, undo. I forgot to convert this mode into an index color mode. 
one bit black and white palette. That's really gonna change the size of the file. So let's save it as March in the ranks A again. We'll replace that other one with LZW compression, yes. Okay, now we can crop down to that selection. And I will save this as March in the ranks O1, O compression. And it still won't be a super huge file because, um, because each pixel is either a zero or a one. It doesn't require a lot of information to save the pixels. Let me just check the J guitar says, greetings, Master Bennett, greetings, J guitar. If you have any questions, folks, I'm, I know I'm going a little fast, but I'm showing these things a couple times. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. And I'll try to remember to check the comments as we go. All right, so Walt Whitman's writing in his journal, writing this poem in my redrawing of it. And it's nighttime, so I drew this knowing that I was going to change a lot of this. Uh, the simplest one to show this on would be like this bottom panel here. I'm going to go in here with the wand select tool and select all the white pixels. There they go. And if I invert those pixels, well, first of all, if I invert, let's see, colors, value, invert, the, because it's an index color image, the whole image inverts. So let's undo that. I'm gonna go in and change just for a little, just for a few minutes, I'm gonna change this back to a grayscale image. That means these pixels, now they look black and white, but they could be gray as well. They, we could turn them gray if we want. Now, if I go in and invert colors, you see that the white all turns black, but that just makes those black trees really hard to see. Select all, and you won't see anything on that panel. So that doesn't help us, but here's what I really wanna do, undo that. I'm going to go in with the lasso tool, and I'm going to select everything within that panel. I have to kind of carefully click around because I don't actually want to select the outer border. And I'm gonna select everything, as I said, this, this'll take a minute, but stay with me here. It's careful work. This is where I put on audiobooks and podcasts and things. I'm gonna go around. See, I have to go all the way around the perimeter of this um, panel and select all this black stuff too. I'll show you what this looks like in a minute. Whoops. I'm just clicking through to get the very edge. Then when I invert that black stuff will all turn white and that white stuff will all turn black. Here, I'll show you what it looks like partially. If I just select the marching column, the words on the top trees. So that stuff is now selected. If I now invert the colors, ah, that's gonna look really nice. So now I have to get the church down there and the trees. So undo, I think it'll look nice. Sometimes you never know until you try it. And sometimes you end up redrawing it. What I'm trying to do here, he mentions coming to a crossroads. And I don't wanna to take too many pages to uh, like laboriously show the column falling out, setting up for campfires. I don't wanna show all that stuff. I've shown it in other places in the story. So it doesn't add a lot to the story. What I wanna do is show them coming to the crossroads and then immediately jump into uh, Whitman leaving the column, going up to this church, which is now a field hospital and walking inside. By the end of next page, I wanna get you inside the field hospital. That's where his poem really takes off. That's what he's telling us about in this poem, what he saw in there. So this is really just the setup and I'm hoping this panel will be enough to hint at soldiers, uh, hint at a column marching into this big open dark space and there's a church on the other side of it. We'll see. I did notice, I'm gonna to have to do the add. I'm gonna take my um, magic wand, select wand, set it to stun, I mean add. Let's go down here, see how my, my lasso tool didn't get some of these white pixels? We'll add that section of white, we'll add that section, add those last sections. We don't want any surprises once we invert here. So all the places where those trees were closed off and did not get selected by the first wand lasso, develop kind of an eye to look for these things. 
we have to go in and select those. Oh, and that little bit there, if it doesn't select the windows too, looks like we're safe. No, we're not safe. That's not going to work. OK, see what I did? I just selected that little bit of the line. But I notice now that that connects up and around to the whole frame. So when I click that little bit, I also got that whole frame around the panel. That's no good. So we'll add that in with the add lasso. That's the trick with the magic wand. It can grab things you don't want it picking up. So is there one more tree space here? Yep, these branches of these trees need a little help and encouragement. And up here, that looks pretty good. There, lost one little bit there. I'm really being finicky here. I don't need to do all those. It's OK. All right, now, ah, OK. Now I think we are ready to invert this panel. Let's try it. Um, colors, invert. There we go. Let me select all. Hmm. Well, we'll see how that looks. I want it to look like they're marching into darkness. I might go in and add some little speckled lines or something to show that there are roads going through that darkness. We can decide that later. Another easy one to do that on, maybe should have started with this one, is I'll go back and select my regular wand tool, select this night sky here, and all these little bits of the trees, right? Then we'll come in with the lasso and we'll grab all the black parts in this panel. And then we'll invert it and it's it should, the plan is it'll look really striking as these um, white trees and outlined against the deep black night sky with white stars twinkling above them. We'll see, sometimes you get some surprises. When you think you've set the panel up, then you invert the colors and you realize it's unreadable. So you can always go back to the drawing board. The materials are cheap here. It's just copy paper and ink. So I can always go back to the drawing board. It's worth a try. Let's see, we'll select a couple more of these. I think we're at, oh, one more section there. Okay. And now we'll select the black parts of that panel, the inked parts. I developed, I started doing this when I realized there were going to be night scenes and I needed a way to show like fire and stars and I didn't want to go crazy uh, getting out like white ink or white paint and, and trying, trying to do a picture. Oh, there's a little section I missed there with the wand trying to do a picture with white ink and, you know, it's just really a pain and you can't do the writing. No matter how careful you are, if the ink is thick enough to stand up on black, if the white ink is thick enough, it's basically like white paint. Otherwise you can see through it and it won't look absolutely white. But if it's that thick, you really can't write with it the way you write with a black ink pen because the black ink is opaque and you can't see through that. So that's not very thick. Let's see. So I couldn't do those words with white ink. They would look all like I painted them with a whiteout bottle brush, you know. So I did that. And now that I've selected all those, I should be able to colors invert. There we go. Let's select all. And where's the piece I missed? There's the little piece I missed there. You notice that um, there are some gray pixels here because it is a grayscale image. But when I go in there and make my image mode indexed, those will disappear. We might get a couple little artifacts like that little bit there, but that's fine. Your eye won't notice that. My eye might, but uh, I'm going to relax once I get these panels done. Now, here's our true test. I'm not sure what to do with these marching legs. I might just, well, let's decide up here. Here's our true test. Because here on this top panel, we're gonna have the sky be black, the trees will be white against it. 
And then these guys marching, I don't want them to be white lines on a black background. That'll look too dark. I want the eye to see them easily. So here's what I think we'll do. First, we'll select the sky. We'll select the trees. Select all these little sections between the branch, each branch of this one tree at the edge. And I'm not going to worry about down here in between the branches of this tree. Because I think what I'll do is I'll put a white halo around Walt Whitman and the soldiers as if it's the dust cloud that makes them easier to see. So we'll leave them as they are. We'll just select this tree and the stars and the words, and that'll be it. Now we're gonna have to go in with the pen to put the halo in there. We'll give ourselves a nice big pen with white ink from the pen tool here. And we'll go in and mark around those soldiers. So there's sort of a glow around them, a white space. And um, that that I kind of like on these pages. It's like, it's like the artwork's just saying, hey, here's somebody. I'm going to sort of outline them in white. Let's see. Um, and leave them as they are, black ink on white paper. So let's see if, if I stop there and I invert the colors of that. Oh, wait, I switched this back to index color. I need to go back to grayscale or the whole image will invert. I'm not sure why that happens. All right, so I'll invert. Now you can see the black goes right up to those dust cloud lines. It destroys the, the horse. It makes it hard to see their rifle barrels. If I select all there, we've lost all that information. Unreadable. So let's undo. And instead of selecting all, I'm going to give myself white ink and a pen. And we'll make it pretty big, like maybe 200 some pixels wide almost. All right, see how big that pen is. Now I can go in here and I can just kind of trace along Walt Whitman's shape roughly. It kind of gives him, I'll give these dust clouds, I'll get the horse's ears. What I want is a smooth enough shape that your eye doesn't see it as a shape. So it doesn't like exactly follow their outline. I want it to just kind of smoothly follow them so your eye doesn't really see the shape. Your eye doesn't say, oh, the black night sky stopped. Your eye just sees black night sky and then a body. It kind of unites the soldiers. Let's see if we can smoothly get all their caps in. Kind of unites them in a single flowing shape. And if I really want it to look dark, sometimes I will make them white lines on black if I'm talking about, if the, the account I'm using is talking about the darkness. Let's give ourselves a little smaller pen here. We'll just outline that barrel, maybe even a little smaller, a little tighter to the barrel. And we'll get each of these two, and then we'll go back out and we'll see how that looks from afar. Smooth this off a little bit, smooth it off. Okay, going back out. Now, the question is, select all. Let's get that little bit of a black spot we saw earlier. Okay, the question is on this panel, does it look like a bunch of soldiers marching under a night sky? If it does, I think I'm happy with it. Um, and if it doesn't, I'll have to, I could make the white a little tighter to them and make the black a little, come in between them a little more. But I think I'll leave it at that. I can always add a little more black. Let me just undo, undo. Let me just curve this white along the horse a little more as if it goes off the panel a little more. I think I need to redo that black spot. There we go. That's looking nice. Okay, now that I've made that decision, I can go into this. This is our fourth panel that we're gonna color this way. Panel three here. Muffled steps in the darkness. So it does need to be pretty dark here. So first thing we could do is we'll select the background and with our add lasso, we'll grab the ground here. We'll make the ground dark. There's definitely going to be a lot of darkness in this panel since it mentions the darkness. Can't leave it as it is. 
We'll just select all these little rocky, dusty scratches on the ground. Now, if we left the dust clouds where the men are marching white, let's invert this as it is. Invert. And then we'll have to go back in with our big pen and like what? Put the halo around their feet. Is that going to be too distracting? And we'll color that out. Let's see how that looks. I kind of designed it so that top panel would show the soldiers, but not their feet. And the panel right below them would show their feet marching in the darkness. You know what, if I'm really not sure, I'm gonna save this. I'm going to export, save if you're in Photoshop, but I'll export it as 1A. So I can always come back to this. Export, no compression. I can always come back to this. Then let's try it with a black background. Let's do this. There. So we're going to select a little more. We'll add with the wand. We'll add that section, that section, that dust cloud, and that dust cloud. And I think that's it. And we'll invert all those. Oh, this is exciting, folks. Then we're going to come in with a smaller pen, kind of tight to the feet here, white ink, and we'll just trace those legs. So now they're individual legs. That might be distracting there. Usually, if I, if I can't decide on something, I'll try a couple options. Usually when I see one of the options, I'm like, no, it's not that. Oh, yeah, it's the first one. I'm thinking this is too distracting to have these legs with the, the halo so close around them. It starts to look like some abstract design, and I want it to be really concrete. Backpacks, legs, feet dust road. Don't want it to get too artsy and abstract looking. But let's just try it now that we've come this far. Okay. Select all. That's a different take. And what I'll do is I will export as 01B. Or I'll make a note to myself sometimes. No compression. I'll make a note to myself of what that what the two versions are, right? And now I think I'll close this down and we should have, I, I'll put these in a folder ultimately, but we'll have these two versions. There we go. So we have our A version, which has the halo around the uh, soldiers at the top and the halo all around the soldiers and the white dust cloud at the bottom. And we have the B version, which has the halo around the soldiers at the top and tight around the legs at the bottom. Actually, I kind of like that too. I can't decide tonight though. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll save both of those and I'll look at them tomorrow and usually I'll know. One last thing we have to do on both of these images that I forgot to do, I'm gonna pull them back into GIMP. We have to crop them down to just the artwork. See how there's all this white space around them? We don't need that in there, that's extra pixels. So what I'll do is I'll select that white space and this might work if there aren't any little scratchy bits of black in there. So I'll select the white space. I'll go to select invert. So now I've selected everything that isn't the white space. And I will say image um, crop to selection. And that cuts it right down to the very edge of the black pixels there. And then I will save it as that. That's our 1A. No compression. Is it, oh, it's a grayscale. We forgot to do this. This is going to save us some storage space. Switch to indexed. Convert. And I will uh, export as a 1A. This is fun stuff, huh? But this has to happen for, uh, <laughs> for all 500 pages of a graphic novel. And then you have to lay out the graphic novel using these images. So it's a lot of work. You have to really love getting it right. You know, you have to really care about your characters and how they look. Let's close this down. Now this one also needs to select the white, invert that selection, crop to selection. Yep, that cut it right down. And 
and oh, this one is also a grayscale. So we're going to convert to an indexed mode. Now we can export it as O1B. Replace, yes, no compression. And we're done. Okay. Those should be much smaller files now. Yeah, see, it's only three megabytes. That's great. Okay. So um, that about does it for tonight. I think that's enough for now, right? Hey, Pigeon Gaming 12, thanks for joining us. Um, Jay Guitar has a question. Uh, I have a question, but it's not exactly relevant to this stage. You mentioned coloring these in. Are you just using the fill tool for that or something more involved using shading and blending and what have ye? Well, that's actually a fine question for this stage because now that I have, um, I'm, I'm typically not going to, let me just share my whole screen here. There we go. Um, I'm typically not going to color in these pages because when these pages appear in the book, whoa, sorry, when these pages appear in the book, where's the book? Well, I'll show you this one. This is the full size book. When they appear in the book, they're gonna be in black and white, right? And that, that I think is just easier to read. Um, it's more clear, it's simpler, and it doesn't take me 10 years to color a 500 page book then. Um, but when, um, when I do the poster art, so let me pull that up. Let's see, so when I do this one, poster wilderness, there it is. So when I do this one, um, I'm actually going to create a full color version, but I'm going to use a box of crayons. And I'll go in here and remember Winslow Homer's painting. You can see it on my desktop here of the men crouching behind the tree and the branches and leaves all around them. He really gets messy with his paint. So I'm anticipating with the crayons getting pretty messy and orange and brown and green and yellow and everything mixed in there um, because this is a confusing scene. Um, and I want to try to capture some of what Winslow Homer was doing. So I'll play around with the crayons. Now there's a chance as I'm playing around with the crayons, I'm going to come up with something that I can't stand, that doesn't look right, that spoils the image or something. So if that happens, just in case, um, or if I want to do an alternate version, I can always come back to this black and white version. Um, and from this, I could print this again and start coloring it again. I always have this original, which is nice and crisp and black and white. Uh, you know, if I, if I lived closer to a copy shop, I would probably keep the original black and white and just, um, just color the printed version, right? But um, I don't know, I, don't, I live a little ways from a copy shop. So I think uh, I'll just color the original, keep my fingers crossed, Maybe we'll even do it live just so we get that adrenaline rush of like uh, all watching together as Merrick walks the tightrope of crayon coloring, um, so crayon coloring Civil War battle scenes, which is uh, an interesting tightrope for us Civil War artists. Um, yeah, so good question. Ah, uh, you are coloring analog style. Yes, I, I got into that. I'll show you the difference. Real quick demo. Um, if you look at the cover, of Freeman Colby volume one. That was colored on the computer because I wanted that sort of television cartoon, smooth um, paint bucket, click and fill look, right? I said, this color blue, click, and that whole shirt color, that whole shirt area is instantly filled with that straight color blue. Um, for volume two, I got out the crayons and the colored pencils and I played around a little more. So there's no like, click and fill here, it's, it's, it's probably about four or five different layers of different colors. And then all, I use basically every crayon in the box uh, somewhere on the image um, and usually in places you wouldn't expect it. So that'll be an interesting video to make. Notice all the, uh, all the orange that's worked into the blue pants here. And that, that kind of helps you see, it helps you see the shapes. It helps break, bring them out on the page. I don't know, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I like doing it analog. It's a better look, I think, for nitty gritty battle scenes. Um, and I don't know, I've got to figure out what the, what the new approach is for volume three that I'm gonna use. So we may have some other surprises too as we work. Um,
but I think we're out of time for tonight. So thanks for stopping by. I hope that gives you a sense of the uh, the pulse pounding, heart heart beating uh, excitement of scanning and processing digital comics, um, battle scenes or otherwise, uh, battle scenes, poetry, hospital scenes or otherwise. Um, so I'm working on Freeman Colby volume three. I'll be working on it all fall into the winter at this rate, um, but come on over to MerrickBennett.com. If the light ever shows you the website, there it is, patreon.com slash Merrick Bennett if you wanna join up and get the updates. Um, and thank you, thank you to my patrons for making this and other projects possible. Um, thanks for joining us tonight, folks. And have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow for more live draws and more exciting scanning and some book building by the end of the week, too. Um, we'll get back to building the actual graphic novels, the actual beasts that you can read. Um, all right. Catch you later, folks. Thanks for stopping by.